Have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes of those wondrous AI models like ChatGPT and Dolly that can magically hold conversations and generate artistic masterpieces? In today's video, I'm going to be answering all of your questions. Well, not really. But I am going to be attempting to recreate the fundamental and most basic element of these AI models, the acclaimed neural network, in scratch. Before we jump into the actual project, you must first understand what exactly a neural network is. Now, you may have already heard of this concept already as it's all over the internet. It's a collection of artificial neurons, commonly called activations, which are interconnected by weights, basically pathways between neurons that have a specific value assigned to them. This structure mimics our biological brain with activations standing for neurons and weights standing for the axons that link billions of neurons together inside our complex mind. This web of neurons and weights are what allows us to think learn, imagine, function, and just be a human being in general. The purpose of this Scratch project is not necessarily to code all of ChatGBT onto the Scratch platform because, frankly, that would be both useless and boring. But rather, this project serves as kind of a proof of concept to test the boundaries of Scratch and see if it's even possible to successfully run and train a neural network on this block code platform. At the time of this recording, I myself don't even know what the outcome's gonna be, so I guess we'll just have to watch and see. For simplicity's sake, we'll be designing a neural network that can learn how to do basic bitwise operations, the math of the programming world, such as AND, OR, and XOR. And as for the video logistics, I'm planning to make this project a two-part series, with today's video being me creating the overall neural network structure and making it run, and the next video being the actual training portion of the project, the part of the network that actually allows it to learn and predict. Because making a neural network is no easy feat, portions of this video will be sped up and time-lapsed, so y'all don't have to watch me drag 100 blocks onto a white canvas for 40 minutes straight. And the project will be linked in the description if you want to explore the project in its entirety. Also, please like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed the video because it did take a long time. Thank you. So because this project is so long, instead of doing the usual walkthrough that I do, I'm instead going to be explaining the crucial steps that I took to making this project. For some background information, our network is going to have three layers. One input layer, one hidden layer, and one output layer. The input layer obviously is going to have two inputs because we're just giving our network two bits, and the output layer is going to have one output, which is the answer that the network thinks um, is correct. Here I'm just creating a block called make network, which helps create the network. Uh, and you don't have to use a block, but uh, I think creating a function like this keeps the whole project organized so you know what, exactly what you're doing and not have code uh, scrambled all over your workspace. And here you can see I'm making the network a 2 to one which means that I have two input uh, nodes, two hidden nodes, and one output node for activations. And as for the clones, I'm just using that to display um, the nodes or neurons and the edges uh, or the weights. So you can just kind of visualize what's going on. So after making this network sprite, I switch over to making uh, the weights display. And to do that, um, if you didn't watch my pen video, I basically made um, a grappling hook with Scratch's pen feature, which allows you to draw lines with uh, sprites. And this fits our purpose very nicely because we want to draw pathways between our neurons. And here I'm just looping over each layer, so we have three layers, um, and I'm connecting all of the nodes in one layer to all of the nodes in the next layer. This is called a fully connected network, which is uh, what we're building here. You can see I say repeat two, and I'm assigning iterators here, and this is just, um, these go-tos are just to position the weight display sprite to draw a line. So now we have the framework for displaying the weight setup. We actually have to add the weights uh, to our table, which we haven't done. And the general practice for neural networks, at least for um, these simple ones, is to randomize the weight values in the beginning uh, to some number between zero and one in our, in our case. And I just created another block called generate random member that does that for me. And now I'm just adding all of the weights to the table. As you can see on the right side, we have four items in the input to hidden weights and two items in the hidden to output weights. Just to explain this a little bit, that's because since we're dealing with a fully connected network, 
Each activation in one layer is connected to every single activation in the next layer. Since we have two input activations uh, and two hidden activations, each of those input activations are connected to the two hidden activations in the next layer, and the other one's also connected to the two. So we have four total. And then the two hidden layers, or the two hidden activations are connected to the one output activation uh, that we have at the end. That's why we have four weights uh, in between input and hidden and two weights between hidden and output. Continuing on, uh, we have our weight set up now, but on the visualization, it's still kind of dull because everything is displayed blue. And since weights have uh, values associated with them, uh, it'd be cooler if we could display them on a sort of red-green spectrum to see if the weight value is closer to zero or closer to one. And that's precisely what I'm doing here. You can see here that I made uh, if k equals one block. And all that means is if we're in the input layer, uh, pull from the input to hidden weights table. And if we're in the hidden layer, pull from the hidden to output weights table. Because um, we stored our weight values in two separate tables because Scratch doesn't support 2D tables. And we have to know which one to pull from. And just for some information, if you want a red to green spectrum in if you're making a neural network like me, or if you're just making any other project, the range is 0 to 35. Here I divided instead of multiplied in the beginning, and that why, that's why it was showing all red. Um, but once I multiplied and I figured it out, it should work. Yep, as you can see, um, the colors showed now, and it matches up with the values that are in the table. If it's closer to one, it'll display to be more green, uh, meaning the strength of the connection is stronger between the two, two activations. And if it's closer to red, that means it's closer to zero. So now I'm just creating another block to put the input into our neural network. Uh, and this just sets the two values of the activation, input activation, so the two nodes that are leftmost on that diagram to uh, our input. And again, you don't have to create your own blocks, um, but I think creating your own blocks makes it more um, applicable if you want to if you want to put multiple inputs or something. And also, you don't have to repeat code, and it keeps it organized as well. What you're seeing right now on the screen is the run block, and although it's not finished, it's basically in charge of making all of the calculations that makes the network return a predicted answer. Now, this predicted answer might not be the correct one. It might be, in fact, very far off, but it's the answer that the network returns based on all of its activation values and weight values. Just to explain running a little bit more, imagine you have two input nodes. One of them has a value of two and one of them has a value of three. And then you have a node in the next layer, let's just say this is our hidden node, and we're trying to calculate the value of that activation. Now, to calculate it, most neural networks, what they do is they take the value of the previous activation and multiply it with the weight that connects that previous activation to this current activation. And we add all of those values up and we get a value. In this case, it's two times one plus three times two, and we get eight. So eight is the value of that question mark node that we didn't know the value of previously. And this operation is also called the dot product, but you don't have to really worry about that. So now going back to the project, here I'm just making a new iterator or variable called theta and that's just going to store our dot product or the multiplication adding all of the uh, products up thing that I explained earlier and it's at this point I realized that it'd be much simpler to make a block or function called get weight that can just help me get um, the weight value between any two activations in my network so I don't have to repeat the code over and over and the way I do that is just access, like do the if k equals 1, if k equals 2 thing, and access the tables um, accordingly. So now I have that uh, function written. Um, here I just uh, use that get weight to get the weight between every node and do that calculation of multiplying. You can see here, multiplying the value of the act previous activation with the weight that connects it to the next one and assigning that with, uh, assigning that activation to that value. So after this run function is done, we basically have a network that you can put input into it um, and call run, and it'll 
do all of these dot products that propagate all the way to the output node, which stores the value that the network returns, or what it predicts to be the right answer, although that's usually not the case. Now, in order to make our network get closer to the right answer or start predicting the right answer, we'll have to make a training algorithm or implement a training algorithm, which we'll be doing in the next video. And that basically minimizes the error between um, the predicted answer and the real correct answer to make the network eventually be able to predict answers with uh, decent accuracy. After doing all of that, we now have a network that can basically run uh, with random weights and also display it in a cool fashion with the weights being color-coded and the activations saying their value. As a final cherry on top, we're going to be implementing a sigmoid function as you can see on the screen. Um, and this is just going to wrap around all of our dot products. So if a node had a value of 2 in the past, uh, let's just say it was a hidden node, um, we would wrap it in this sigmoid function that would make it equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative 2. Although you might think this is such a weird thing to add or such a weird function, it actually helps our network greatly not only by uh, restricting the value of our nodes to be between 0 and 1, but also it helps smoothen out the predictions and it'll greatly help our training as well. So after we go ahead and make a block for that and implement it into, the, into our project, it should make our nodes all be between 0 and 1 instead of, like right now you can see one of them is 1.2. So here I'm just um, replacing all of the um, nodes values with sigmoid of the nodes value. And you can see here now everything is bounded between 0 and 1 and the sigmoid function is applied to our network. All right, so that's gonna be the end of this video. And in the next video, we'll be making the training part of this network. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I know this video was slightly different from how I usually do it, uh, but I just wanted to showcase a little bit of the possibilities of Scratch and what you can do with it. And also since we're in the AI era right now, um, just show you guys a little piece of how everything works. And again, it'd be much appreciated if you could just like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave one down below. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!